Welcome to the Forecast Pro video tutorial on item mapping, part one. In this first part, we will cover how to map different products interactively. In part two, we will discuss how you can import a mapping sheet to map multiple products all at once. So what is item mapping? Item mapping allows you to combine the historic data of multiple items or groups to a product. In particular, what we will focus on today is new product forecasting. This way we can actually map the history of an existing product to the history of a new product, creating a combined history that will produce a better, more accurate forecast. So how does this work? Here is an example of how we would do an item mapping. The green line shows an old existing product, and the blue line shows a new product that is taking over for it. The goal of item mapping is to combine these two historical data series together to produce a combined history, a mapped history that we can use to generate a forecast. Let's look at an example. In this example, I've loaded in some sample data with two new products that have been added. This product, which began at the beginning of the year, and we're replacing this single item. And this new product, which was just introduced in the most recent period, and we're replacing these two items at the same time. In order to do the product mapping, we need to go to the forecasting tab, and you can see there is a product mapping icon. I'm going to go ahead and click this and bring up the product mapping dialog box. As you can see, I can click around on different items, and it will show me the item that I have selected. I'm going to go to my first new product here. You can see it currently says that there is no mapped history presently. What I need to do is map the history of an existing product. It gives me the list here, and I can search using the filter option, but I know it is this one item right here. Once I map the product, you can see it's showing the current selection and showing the two histories overlaid on top of each other. I have some control here as well in terms of the allocation. Do I want to do 100% of the allocation of this, which I do, or I could actually push this up to say 200%. You'll see it will increase the volume greatly. I'm actually going to set this back down to 100% so that I'm going to map it one to one. I also have control over the date range of the data itself. I can either use the full historic data of the mapped product, or I could actually shrink it. So you can see here on the graph, if I were to uh, lower this here, I can actually use less of the history when I map the two together. I'm going to go ahead and commit this and close my box. And you can see I have now created a combined history where I'm generating a forecast for this. You can also see that the icon next to each item has changed from a square to a plus sign, indicating that there is mapped history. This will be a visual indication for you. And we can see that the groups also turn to plus signs because that means there is mapped history below. Now, in my second example where I can map multiple items together, I'm going to go ahead up here and click on my new product. Again, I will click on my product mapping icon to bring up my mapped history. I know that it is being replaced by these two items. So I can actually click on both of them by holding down the shift key and you will see it will actually apply both of these together. So I'm going to combine the two of them together. I'm going to do 100% allocation of both and I'm going to use the full history of both. I'm going to go ahead and commit this and I can go ahead and bring this on and now you can see I have the combined history of those two items plus the new product mapped here 